Breaking news, how the Jeep Wrangler went from rock crawler to luxury SUV. Find out what mainstream media has to say about our beloved Jeep Wrangler today on Dirt Road Cred. Before we start this video, we wanted to introduce a brand new sponsor of the channel, Gerber and Gerber Outdoor Gear. Gerber's known for creating excellent outdoor gear, and in this little pack, they set us a great fixed blade knife, a mini pack hatchet for camp, a completely utilitarian all-in-one camp fork and spatula, and then always a gorge, a folding shovel with a nylon bag. They're very much known for their quality and off-road gear. So we're gonna be using a lot of this in some future videos, but check out the link in the description. We'll leave that down below where you can check out all sorts of cool Gerber gear. What's going on guys welcome back to the channel no i didn't start a reporting job for a local news company this is just an article that i read on abc news and in fact i found it on jl wrangler forum now as jeep enthusiasts i'm always on the forum here so you guys can kind of see me perusing around on there i always look up dirt road cred in the search query to see if anyone has searched for us and if they're writing about us so i can comment back and chat on it now i saw a big post and one of the most trending it was yesterday or the day before and it was the article from abc news about how the jeep wrangler went from quote unquote a rock crawler to a luxury SUV. Now, I think that this is a really interesting question. And in fact, a lot of our commenters, I'm sure would have to agree. There are some hardcore purists that really don't think what the Jeep Wrangler is going towards is what the Jeep Wrangler started as. Now in this video, what we're gonna do is aim to go over the article in a whole, kind of read through it, check it out, what it has to say, and then also go through the JL Wrangler forums and read what people are saying on there. I think this is gonna be pretty interesting because back in the day, CNN, not CNN, 60 Minutes did a huge article on the CJ7 and how easy it was to roll it over and it really hurt the brand's reputation. All right guys, so here it is. Let's go through the ABC News article and the title, How the Jeep Wrangler Went from Rock Crawler to Luxury SUV. First things first, the modest 4x4 now costs upwards of 100K for the Rubicon model. That is not a lie. The level two by Jeep for the Rubicon 20th anniversary 392 was I believe $114,000. So in our eyes, that also went up a crazy amount. That is a lot of money for a vehicle. But to the second argument and something I'm just gonna say right away, you don't have to buy a 392 level two by AEV to get into the Wrangler. In this article, as you scroll down through, it's talking about a lot of things in here. So it's talking about how the Jeep Wrangler can ford rivers, crawl over boulders, traverse deserts, and blaze through uncharted territory. Someone from ABC News better check on that because that sounds a lot like ChatGPT. But <laughs> anyways, I can tell when I read through this whole article, it's not written by a Jeep enthusiast. It is written from someone very, uh, objectively about the subject and about price and solid data. So what we're seeing here is just a lot more information about what the Jeep Wrangler actually is and what it has become. So they're talking about the 2024, the new features that were added to it, as well as the larger screen and so forth. What really comes down to here is the new inclusion of power seats truly speaks to who Jeep's real customer base is, affluent people. Ed Kim, president of consulting firm Auto Pacific, told ABC News. So Ed Kim kind of said that, look, the Jeep Wrangler is getting to more affluent and kind of closer to that 1% or the 10%. Now, Ed Kim, I would disagree a little bit with that, but I do think for those that are getting the absolute most out of the Wrangler, you're not going to be pretty modest income. You're going to have to make a pretty decent amount to be able to either afford it outright or make the complete payment. But the one thing that I did want to talk about is that with the base four-door Wrangler, it does start at $36,990. So if you're looking to get into a base Jeep, you're not looking to break the bank, you're still able to get into that, and that's pretty close to what a similarly equipped SUV now has. I think with the 2024 coming out, it definitely is a lot better coming with a larger screen, the more safety features, including the current airbags, and it's really gotten it up to speed. The biggest argument for the base models is why didn't Jeep include any off-road based base models. So with the Bronco, you could get a base model with the Sasquatch package, lockers, 35s, a lift kit, the whole works. On the Jeep, they kind of said, if you want all that, you've got to get the Rubicon initially. And then they started to trickle down to the Willys. But really for a lot of customers, that was just out of touch. You're not going to be able to afford 60 to $70,000 for a Rubicon. And it's really going to take a lot for you to be able to get up to that price point. That's a big argument I have is that for you to be able to afford a Jeep that has front and rear lockers from the factory, that has 35s and is more off-road capable, you've got to step up to the big boy leagues and pay for all the leather and all the gadgets on the inside. So so to those fans and those commenters that are going to talk about that, I completely agree with you. And I'm glad that the Willys trim now includes the rear locker, the larger tires, and the high top fender flares that came on the Rubicon. That was a big thing for me, is getting back to those base trim levels and making those more off-road capable. 
I'm gonna roll that into my next thought and that's that Jeep is a business. So if they're noticing that, hey look, the guys that can afford a Rubicon, they wanna go off road with it, they can also afford a little bit more. So why not only make the trim that's the most expensive have the front and rear lockers. But Jeep's business model overall as a whole is to make the most profitability as possible. So looking at that, having the Rubicon with all the extra gadgets and the true off-roader tools like the lockers, the bigger axles, larger tires on the Extreme Recon, it probably makes sense to add some creature comforts on the interior so they could market this as the most expensive lineup. That meant for a long time that people, if they wanted to get that true off-road capability, they had to upgrade to the top of the line Rubicon. And half of that I think is because Jeep wanted to make more profit off of it. So I am really glad to see that with the Willys trim in the 2024, it now does come in at a lower price point. But even at that, I think a lot of people are still gonna argue the price. I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm not happy with the way a lot of things are priced, but it's not just the automotive market. If you guys have looked around at interest rates, the home prices, buying a dozen eggs at Costco or even the local market or the local store, everything is through the roof. Heck, the other day when I booked an Airbnb, the cost for us to go down to Daytona has almost tripled or doubled since we went down there three years ago. When I tell you that costs are getting out of hand, they absolutely are, but that's not gonna be addressed just in one situation and still continue everywhere else. Jeep is not able to roll through and keep the prices as low as they can, while every other piece to build that Jeep, to hire the person to do it, to ship things in from wherever they are, all those prices went up as well, so they can't just let Jeep stay at a stable price. They do have to increase, and unfortunately, that's the way the market is right now. So one thing that Jim Morrison, who is the head of Jeep sales, I wanted to bring up, so he did say we are seeing more demand for high-priced Wranglers. Wrangler has a high residual value. So both of those statements are true, and I think what Jeep is thinking of is that the, I would say the majority or the uh, kind of, yeah, the majority of Jeep buyers anymore is not your true off-road rock crawling enthusiast. That's the reason we have Sahara high altitudes. We've got four by E's. We've got a lot of these other trims because these folks are not playing planning to take it off road. And I think what we need to also come together as a community is realize that not everyone has to go out and bare knuckle bash their Jeep into every rock they can find to still be an enthusiast of the brand. I will tell you guys, I do see a lot of hate about people that build their Jeep a certain way. They don't take it off road as much as they should. But what I think we really need to be coming together is as a Jeep community as a whole. I saw every sort of shape, color, any type of Jeep you can imagine down in Daytona. And the coolest part was is that we all have one thing in common. We enjoy freedom and we enjoy the Jeep lifestyle. So with that being said, if you wanna get into a Jeep and buy a high altitude, so that way your wife has heated leather seats and a very smooth ride on her way to work, but still be able to pull the Sky One Touch back, have at it. I really wanna see more people be able to enter into this industry and you know the only thing that the benefit is for me is that when people buy high altitudes and these very expensive trims, it allows us to have crazy things like the 392, the Extreme Recon, and more of our off-road goodies because they can subsidize some of that cost by selling some of these on-road models. So for you guys, I know a lot of people are gonna bash the high altitudes, the Saharas, this and that. They sell quite well, and honestly, I'm happier that Jeep got the sale and Toyota, all these other brands didn't steal it away from the brand and we got to still keep it in the family. So here's another interesting statement. It says, these days, corporate executives and wealthy families are buying the Wrangler. Even Porsche 911 owners are trading in their sports car for one, according to Tyson Jomini, Vice President of Data and Analytics at JD Power. I would argue that I've seen that. I've seen a lot of corporate executives and folks buy a Jeep Wrangler for their beach house just to park it down there or buy a really expensive one. But I think that's been happening over the years. And I would say that they were also buying Mercedes G-Wagons and built up Toyota 4Runners and nice big diesel trucks. It happens all across the board. So for like truck owners to say, hey, look, these executives are buying a platinum F350 diesel. Well, yeah, it's because they have more disposable income and that's the highest trim they can. So they may as well flaunt it if they got it and they're going to buy the highest trim. So I think that's across the board. Some of these statements are just uh, not really conducive to a lot of analytical research. And some of the guys in the forums kind of noted that as well. So why don't we pop over to the forums? Let's see what the forum gentlemen have to say because a lot of the times the forums actually get closed down because they either get political or they get really offensive, but this one hasn't been closed yet. So let's take a look. So here it is guys, the famous article on the JL Wrangler forums. I gotta say, I've been on this forum for probably since its inception in 2017. 
And uh, there's a lot of fun, interesting comments on here. Um, I would say, so like, let's look at this guy. I hope that you guys are also seeing this on the J.R. Wrangler forums and you can even tag this video too. Um, but this guy, Opus, he's got 25 likes on his comment. He goes, I get it, but a base two-door sport still has an MSRP of 31,195. So it's not like the Affluent can get into, it can only get into a Jeep. But yeah, four-door Rubicon 392 with all the bells and whistles straight from the factory is now far out of reach for the vast majority of buyers. Opus, that's exactly kind of what I had to say too. So you can still get into a base Jeep. There's no one telling you can't. And even with a reasonable income, you could afford that. That's very subjective too to how much you want the car payment to be. But for a 392, big engine, leather, loaded up, you're not getting into that too easily if you're making kind of middle, middle income or even median income. There's another guy. What a poorly written article with their assumptions of what a Jeep Wrangler has become are just that, assumptions. Freaking clickbait crap. Love that. But anyways, kind of perusing through these, so we're kind of like, there's another guy, he agrees. All of this makes sense. It's today's economy, even a $31,000 model that's much less suited to serve as a single family vehicle, it's expensive. Um, but he also said too, when you compare this to the affordability of CJs and TJs during their expective time periods, which is what I just mentioned and I didn't read this, the JL is much less attainable for many Americans in the same similar economic brackets. So a little bit different of what I had to say, but back in the day, everything was a little cheaper. College was cheaper, food was cheaper, even respectively to what the minimum wage is. So, and that's I think with the whole economy, so I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole, but definitely a lot has changed and it's not as easy to be able to afford a vehicle that can just sit in the garage and be a fun toy. So here's a comment that I really liked and I think we'll kind of just end it with one of these comments. He goes, I get it, the changes has driven up the cost. A more utilitarian vehicle has come and gone, but at the same time, take a look at the styling choices in the market. If you want a mid-size SUV, there are three options in the market and for my wife, only two were acceptable. One, the Jeep Wrangler, two, the Ford Bronco, three, everything else, AKA high-waisted, I don't know, something cars. I know form over function and styling wasn't the only reason to get a Wrangler, but it does matter. And then I love this picture that he actually tagged. This is like Dodge, Chevy, Lincoln, Honda, Mercedes. Look at all of them. Just from the side, even the Jeep Grand Cherokee, they're all so similar. I mean, this is what we really do have to argue with you guys. And that's what I wanna say about this. That's why the Jeep is so expensive because you've got a solid front and rear axle. You've got removable doors, a removable hardtop, a foldable windshield, waterproof floors that you can spray out. It costs a lot to still produce all those features and also make it pass crash ratings, EPA standards, all this other fun mumbo jumbo from the government. It does cost to do that. And if you don't want it looking like this, then it's probably gonna cost a little bit more. And if you want them to squeeze the 392 in, then uh, up the price also a little bit. But I'm gonna read through probably the next 17 pages worth of this and just kind of check out what everyone has to say. This is some light reading for me in the evening time once everything cools off. And it really does give me a good perspective of what our audience and what the Jeep community sees. So that's why we love to do it because we're the same as you, we're in this game and we are the Jeep audience. Overall though guys, this video is really fun for us to do. Not only because we get to talk about the community that we're involved with, but we get to talk about some high topic articles that seem to be releasing here and causing a lot of commotion. Now, if you guys want to get involved, definitely comment on this video and then a secondary layer, go over to the JR Wrangler forums, get involved, create a profile and start chatting with folks on there. It can be very informative and it's a great way for you to learn about new products, see build ideas and just chat with people online. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope a lot of guys on the forum see this as well. Comment your forum thread name or even tag this on the forums. We would love to chat on there as well. But this overall has been a fun video and I hope you guys like this style. If you have any other comments about types of videos that we should shoot, whether it's on a news article or a certain feature or tip or trick, let us know down in the comments because we adamantly read and comment back to you guys. Until next time though, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred and I want you to get out there and earn yours.